Good afternoon. The hearing officer meeting for Tuesday, June 20th, 2017 is called to order. My name is David Williams and I'm the hearing officer for the City of Tempe. The City of Tempe hearing officer is authorized by Arizona Revised Statutes and the City of Tempe Zoning and Development Code and he has the duty to carry out the provisions and intent of the City's of Tempe General Plan and Zoning and Development Code as well. The hearing officer is granted authority to conduct public hearings to review and either approve, continue, deny, or approve with conditions several types of applications, including use permits, variances, and property abatements. On today's modified agenda, we have seven items that will actually be heard, consisting of a set of meeting minutes, five property abatement requests, and one use permit request. So for agenda item number four, Mailey Enterprises, agenda item number five, Ontiverio's property, and agenda item seven, Weiser property, those are all abatement cases. Uh, they have been withdrawn as those properties have been brought into compliance with city code. Uh, on a, regarding agenda item number 10, a compliance review for conditions of approval uh, on the Massage Hookah Lounge, that item has been continued to a future meeting. So if you're here for any of those agenda items, including number four, five, seven, or ten, will not be heard today, okay? Uh, as a hearing officer, I reviewed uh, a report prepared by the Community Development Department on each of the items that are being considered on today's agenda, and I used the information in that report uh, in understanding the case and during the deliberations that we have today. Additionally, I've driven by each of the properties that are going to be heard on today's agenda and looked at the conditions of the property and the immediate surrounding area. Uh, if you are an applicant or interested citizen, when your request is called or when you wish to address the hearing officer, please step up to the microphone at the front of the room and state your name and city of residence. Any person other than the applicant that wishes to speak about a case on today's agenda should complete a white speaker card. Those are available at the front of the room and be handed to staff when you approach the podium. I have a couple already, so thank you for getting those in early. Uh, you're given about three minutes to speak. Uh, any person who is aggrieved by a decision by the hearing officer today may file an appeal, and you'll have 14 days to do that um, after the decision is made. So the deadline to file an appeal for decisions made today is 3 p.m. July 5th, 2017. The deadline to file an appeal from decisions made today is 3 p.m. July 5th, 2017. Appeals of the decisions of the hearing officer are heard either by the Board of Adjustment or the Development Review Commission, whichever uh, body is appropriate for that case. Uh, in the case of a property abatement, if the property owner fails to file an appeal or fails to bring the property into compliance prior to this appeal date, the code violations that are going to be addressed today at today's hearings will be abated by the City of Tempe. I'd like to introduce a couple folks before we get started. Over to my right is Steve Abrahamson, Principal Planner, uh, Diane McGuire, Administrative Assistant, and Lee Jimenez, a Senior Planner with the City of Tempe. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the agenda items. As we've mentioned, there's a modified agenda uh, today where a few items won't be heard, uh, but item one will be heard, and that's approval of the meeting minutes from our June 6th meeting. I did review those minute meetings. They are accurate reflection of and record of that meeting, and they are hereby approved. That's agenda item number one. Agenda item number two is a request, <coughs> excuse me, approval to abate public nuisance items at the Cohen property. This is case CE 17-2097. It's located at 2352 East Riviera Drive. And the applicant is the city of Tempe. Uh, Mr. Blau. Yes, sir. My name is Michael Glab, residential code inspector for city of Tempe's code compliance. I'm here tonight in reference to property at 2352 East Riviera Drive. Uh, in, on March 6, 2017, I received a complaint related to overheight grass and weeds in the gravel landscape at the property. On March 7th of this year, I observed the grass and weeds in the gravel landscape and I mailed notice to both property owners. On March 21st, I returned to the property, observed little to no change, so I then mailed a second notice to both property owners. On April 4th of this year, I returned to the property, observed little to no change, so then I posted a notice to the structure, 
Officer, I had plans to post a notice to the structure. I returned on April 5th the following day to post the notice and took photos of the property. On April 5th, I also received a second complaint related to the grass and weeds in the, the landscape. On April 6th of this year, I was contacted by a tenant who advised me that the lease says the owners are responsible for the landscape. So the tenant stated they would not be doing uh, complying with code. On April 12th of this year, I observed little to no change at the property, so I issued citations to both property owners. On April 27th, I observed little to no change at the property and sought bids for a property abatement. On May 4th of this year, my office received a third complaint related to the grass and weeds present in the landscape. And on May 8th of this year, I sought or I committed, submitted the paperwork for tonight's uh, hearing agenda to hear the case. Uh, at this point in time, progress has been made. I did view the property today. Unfortunately, there still is some green growth in the southwest corner of the front landscape and a lot of dead grass uh, throughout the entire gravel landscape. And then there's no noticeable grass and weeds on the sidewalk. Uh, at this point in time, I'm seeking a 180-day open abatement period for this property to uh, address the grass and weed issues at the property. Okay. Thank you very much. So I was by there today. I did see there's some improvement. It's incomplete. There's still issues with wheat, with uh, grass coming up through the rocks. Um, have you had any contact with them today or this week? The only contact that I can recall is with one tenant. I do not recall any contact from the owners. With the owner, right, the owner. I was, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone in the audience today who wanted to speak on agenda item number two? Uh, this is a, a property abatement for the Cone property on East Riviera Drive. Not seeing anybody in the hearing room today. Uh, the city's request to abate these nuisance items on the property for a period, open period of 180 days approved as requested by staff. Thank you, Mr. Glaub. Thank you. Um, still need to get that finished and get that property cleaned up. Okay, agenda item number three is requesting approval to abate public nuisance items at the McCabe property, case CE 168523, located at 1301 East Broadmoor Drive. Uh, Mr. Glaub. Yes, sir. On uh, December 19th of this year, my office received a complaint related to deteriorated landscape at the property at 1301 East Broadmoor Drive. On December 20th of 2016, I reviewed the property, observed grass and weeds in the gravel, and I mailed notice to the property owners. On January 3rd of 2017, I observed little to no change, and I mailed a second notice to both property owners. On January 19th of this year, I observed some progress at the property, but no grass uh, for another issue. There was additional violations related to deteriorated paint. However, I did not observe any progress with the grass and weeds. I did receive a voicemail from the property owner requesting an extension through the weekend for completion. I did grant that extension. On January 27th of this year, I observed little to no change with, in regards to the grass and weeds. So then my next step was to post a notice to the structure. On January 30th of this year, I planned to post the notice. However, I did observe some improvement, but it was not, in, it was not complete at that point in time. Mm -hmm. On February 24th of this year, I did return. Observed still no change since the last inspection. I did post the notice to the structure asking for the completion of the removal of the grass and weeds. On March 6th of this year, I observed some progress, but still incomplete. On March 17th, I returned and observed grass and weeds remaining. I issued citations to both property owners. On April 21st of this year, I sought bids for uh, abatement at the property. And then on May 8th of this year, I submitted the packet for tonight's hearing to be heard for this agenda. Uh, at this moment in time, uh, I did view the property earlier today, observed that there was still uh, gra significant grass, uh, grass and weed growth. Uh, it was dead, uh, but approximately two feet tall in the front gravel landscape. And so I'm seeking a 180-day open abatement period for completing the grass and weed removal at the property. Okay. Um, yeah, I saw there had been some improvement here and then other things were not done. Um, and I also noticed some landscape materials being stored in the front yard. Is that allowed per our code? It, it to is. Stack and store materials like that? Is that permitted? It, it is an additional violation. That violation was noted, um, given to the property owners shortly after. So it would be a little bit further in the, the, pro um, the grass and weeds issue is a little bit further along. 
I see. And I asking see. it to be removed. So uh, at this moment in time, I'm not seeking abatement for that just yet, but they do have plans to build a block wall with it. Okay. Well, hopefully they take care of them both at one time. Um, on and off progress made. You mentioned an extension was granted at their request. This was back in January, right? That's correct. And so how long an extension did you give them? They requested specifically through that weekend. So I gave them uh, several additional days, I believe. Um, it would have been April, or I'm sorry, January. January 19th is when I made the observations at the property. Right. And then when I received a voicemail from uh, Ms. McCabe, and in the voicemail she requested through the weekend, and I followed up on the 27th. So they had eight days from the date of the request to complete the grass and weed okay. removal. And they were just looking for a couple days at that point to get Correct. it done. And still felt the remedy of the issue. Okay. Have you heard from them today or this week? Uh, I did receive an additional voicemail saying that the block uh, materials in the front yard was intended for a wall. That so was today or this week? It, it was not this week. It was, uh, I believe, approximately two weeks ago, three weeks ago. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Is there anyone in the audience who wants to speak on agenda item number three, the McCabe property abatement on East Broadmoor? Not seeing anyone and having visited the property today and seeing the conditions are persisting in addition to some other things that are of concern and maybe future violations, uh, staff's request for an open 180-day abatement is approved as requested. Thank you, Mr. Glaub. Thank you, sir. Uh, item number four, as we mentioned earlier, is uh, been withdrawn because that property was brought into compliance. A, a happy story. And agenda item number five also uh, will not be heard today because that property was also brought into compliance. Uh, so we're going to move to agenda item six. Also a property abatement for public nuisance items at the Antill Bakefield, Breakfield property, excuse me, case uh, CE164593 located at 2307 East Aspen Drive. Uh, the applicant is the city of Tempe uh, for weeds, grass, deteriorated landscape. Mr. Glaub. Yes, sir. On June 15th of 2016, I observed overhyped grass and weeds on the west side yard landscape of uh, the property at uh, 2307 East Aspen Drive. I mailed notice to the property owners at that time. On June 29th, I observed little to no change, so I mailed a second notice to both property owners. On July 14th of last year, I observed little to no change. I plan to post a, a notice to the structure. On July 15th of last year, I returned to the property and posted that notice. On July 22nd of last year, I observed progress at the property. I did have some voicemails with Ms. Brakefield and was awaiting a response from her. Some of the issues at the time was I was asking that the front landscape be watered and returned to a green living condition and then the grass and weeds in the west side yard be removed. Um, so there were numerous violations at the property and uh, due to the time frame I was asking for that uh, front landscape to be returned to the living condition. I wanted to give periods of 30 days or so between my observations for uh, giving them time to bring it into compliance. Uh, in August, uh, August 18th of 2016, um, I did receive a voicemail from Ms. Brakefield stating that she would be killing gr the grass and adding gravel throughout the front yard landscape. I did give plenty of time. October 18th of 2016, I returned to the property, observed no signs of grass removal or addition of gravel. Uh, on October 20th, I returned to the property and posted one additional notice asking for the addition of uh, grass or the gravel. On uh, November 23rd, my office received a complaint related to the grass and weed growth in the west side yard. On December 29th of last year, I re returned to the property, observed little to no change. I issued citations to both property owners. On March 28th of this year, my office received an additional complaint of the deteriorated landscape in the west side yard, overhyped grass and weeds in the gravel. There's river rock on that west side yard. so. Uh, between the river rock and the grass and weed growth, it's difficult to determine what's supposed to be in that landscape. Uh, on March 29th of this year, I sought bids for the property abatement. On April 4th, my office received an additional complaint. Uh, April 11th and April 25th, we received additional complaints related to the grass and weed growth on that west side yard landscape. 
On May 19th, my packet was submitted for the addition to this hearing agenda. At this time, I'm asking for approval for a 180-day open abatement period as property owners have been given plenty of time to remedy the grass and weed removal on the west side yard. Progress has been made. They did cut it down, but it's still lacking completion at this point in time. And then the front yard landscape has been returned to a green living condition. So steps have been taken to improve the property, but it's still incomplete. Okay, and it sounds like a lot of the concern or complaint was focused on that west side yard area versus the front. But So the front now is, is closer to compliance where they planted it. Okay. Uh, any contact with these property owners uh, this week or recently, the most recent? Not recently. Again, last time, I believe, was in August of last year. Okay, and just to be clear, so when we've got a rock landscape design, um, and grass grows through it because it's not maintained properly and we just weed eat it down to the level of the rocks. We're not getting compliance there. That doesn't need code. It needs to be maintained as either rock or a living landscape. And that's kind of maybe what some folks don't understand. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone here for agenda item number six, the Antle Breakfield property um, on today's agenda? Not seeing anyone, and yes, there was improvement at this property. Again, is it still not getting to code compliance by maintaining the, the type of material that's originally there? Um, uh, I understand there's been improvement, uh, but just cutting the just cutting the stuff down is not adequate enough. So, staff requests to approve an open 180-day abatement uh, for the Antle Breakfield property is approved as requested. Thank you, Mr. Blau. Thank you, sir. Okay, agenda item number eight um, is our next item. This is a request to approve approval for to abate public nuisance items at the Guthrie Schroeder property, case uh, CE172498, located at 2106 East La Jolla Drive. The applicant is the city of Tempe. Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Glaub. On March 14th of this year, I proactively observed overheight grass and weeds in the front yard landscape, and I mailed a notice to the property owners. On eight, March 28th of this year, I observed little to no change at the property, so I sent a second notice to the property owners. On April 11th of this year, my office received a complaint from an anonymous party related to deteriorated landscape. I observed little to no change at the property, and so I plan to post a notice at the structure. Um, I posted it on April 11th. On April 18th of this year, I returned to the property and observed little to no change, so I issued citations to both property owners. On April 25th, my office received a second anonymous complaint related to a deteriorated landscape at the property. And May 2nd, my office received a third complaint related to deteriorated landscape at the property. On May 11th of this year, I observed little to no change at the property, so I requested bids for property abatement. And on May 19th, I then submitted the abatement packet for addition to, the, to tonight's hearing. Uh, as uh, I've had no communication with any parties, and they did make progress at the property, but it still is incomplete. There is still dead overheight grass and weeds in the front landscape and then the west side yard landscape. Um, this is a corner house, so it's a long river and La Jolla. So a lot of traffic uh, seeing the dead growth at this particular property. Um, at this time, I'm seeking a 180-day open abatement period for this particular property. Okay, right. It is a corner property. I noticed that too. So the corner that's most exposed is the least maintained. Um, and this was originated both as a proactive action by the city and from neighbor complaints. Is that correct? That's correct. Multiple complaints after I initiated the case in March of this year. Okay, and the, the progress that's been done to date is not adequate, in your opinion? Correct? That's correct. There, there's still over height. Um, code itself has numerous requirements related to landscaping, uh, one of which that would apply to this would be that it's over 12 inches in height, uh, but there's also requirements to dead growth, and in this case, the weeds are dead, uh, but they're still significant and in the front landscape and side, west side landscape. Right, that's what I observed also. Thank you, Mr. Glaub. Uh, this is agenda item eight, uh, Guthrie Schroeder property. Anyone in the audience going to speak on this case today? Not seeing anyone here to represent the property owner, uh, understanding that these nuisance items are persisting at the property and that some progress has been made. 
um, I will certainly accept staff's recommendation and approve a 180-day open abatement as recommended. Well, thank thank you, you, Mr. Glaub. Okay, cruising right along to agenda item nine. Uh, also an abatement item uh, regarding public nuisance items, and I per forgive me for mispronouncing the owner's name, items at the Quigon, Quigon property, case CE172568, located at 1411 East Broadmoor Drive. Uh, the applicant is the city. Uh, Mr. Glaub. Uh, I'd like to withdraw this application at this time, sir. I believe that the property has been brought into compliance with code, at, at least in regards to my initial complaints um, that I was responding to. Uh, there may be some new issues at the property, but notice would need to be given to the property owners to remedy that before getting to this point. Okay, thank you for that for that recommendation. Anyone in the audience on agenda item nine for the Quigon property? Uh, drove by there today and it did look very good and like the work had been completed and adequate. So I absolutely accept that withdrawal. Uh, so that case, um, agenda item number nine, uh, abatement request is withdrawn uh, by the city for the properties in compliance. Thank you, sir. Yes, and thank you for your work today. Okay, agenda item 10 would have been next, but that's continued to a future meeting. If you are interested in item 10, contact staff for the potential date of that meeting. And we will go on to our last agenda item on today's uh, for today's meeting, which is number 11, requesting approval of a use permit to allow a tobacco retailer uh, for the Levine Smoke Shop number 6, case PL170157. This is located at 4325 South 48th Street. Uh, the applicant is uh, Lori Scott of Mashtas LLC. This is at the corner of Vineyard and 48th, right? Uh, Mr. Jimenez. Good evening, hearing officer. Um, Williams, excuse me. My name is Lee Jimenez. I'm a senior planner with the Community Development Department. Uh, Levine Smoke Shop Number Six is proposing a tobacco retail store in the northeast corner of West Vineyard and South 48th Street in the CSS Commercial Shopping and Services District. The establishment plans to sell cigars and other tobacco products with proposed hours of operation from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., six days a week, and closed on Sundays or Mondays. In the city of Tempe, tobacco retailing is a separated use and cannot be located within a quarter mile or 1,320 feet of a charter school, private school, public school, uh, which provides elementary or secondary education. The proposed uh, smoke shop is approximately 1,340 feet from Nevitt Elementary School, which is located on uh, or at 6640 South 44th Place in the city of Phoenix City Limits. At the time the staff report was published, staff had received two emails in opposition. Since then, two more emails and two phone calls in opposition have been received. A copy of the emails were provided uh, at a study session, as well as a verbal summary of the phone calls. The opposition cites concern for downgrading of property values, compatibility with nearby uses, and the secondary effects caused by potential disruptive behavior. As indicated in the staff report, Staff believes that this application meets the approval criteria for the use permit and supports a request subject to the conditions provided in the staff report. Though staff recommends adding a, a st the standard condition for uh, the applicant to come back um, for a review of compliance of the conditions of approval after six months of operation. And um, I'll be available should you have any questions. Okay, uh, a couple of things. So I was by there today, and you know, if you're a city planner or city resident or community resident, you understand that cities have plans and uh, zoning and guidelines about development and land use. And this is largely a residential area, right? And this corner property is intended to be a neighborhood center, right? Isn't that what CSS is? is um, neighborhood services. Strip, yes. So um, I saw some of the complaints are concerned about that commercial activity may be a problem. But this is actually part of a master plan and long intended to support the neighborhood, not be a problem necessarily. So in that center, though, I see uh, a hair place, martial arts training. We don't really have anything that serves necessarily the immediate walking distance neighborhood there yet. But this has been there for quite a while, this prop, this building. 
probably 20 or 30 years old. Okay, so it's interesting how it's the users haven't happened as intended and planned. So I just kind of wanted to get that out there. And you want to add a condition for uh, compliance review, uh, and for the time period would be. That's correct. Um, and if you'd like, I can read the actual condition to uh, the let's, record. Let's do that if if we get to an approval. If we get there okay. today, we don't know we're going to get there. Well, we would. I recommend um, staff recommends adding uh, the following condition: return to the hearing officer for review of compliance with conditions of approval within six months. The timing for the six-month review period to commence begins when the business is in full operation. Advise community development staff when in full business operation. If the full business activity is not initiated within one year, the use permit will lapse. Okay, great. Um, I suspect we've got folks here that want to speak. Oh, I know we have folks here that want to speak on this, maybe more than just a couple. Um, we're going to ask you questions about PD and crime after I hear some of their concerns directly. So be stand by for that. One more thing as well, unless I missed it, um, I didn't see a condition related to hours of operation. And if we would staff support that was added, because um, it looked like they're just asking for till 8 p.m. That's correct, um, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Six days a week, so um, the applicant will have to decide whether they want to. Is that automatically a condition, or should we add that if this is approved as a specific condition of approval, if you, the hours? If you believe it, it it's, it's something that should okay. be required. Of well, if you, after I hear the concerns, and I have a concern as well for evening things that go on and after dark things, you may want to limit the hours of operation. So, okay. Just so want to get that out there as well. Okay, uh, enough talking by staff and the hearing officer. I'd like to hear from the neighbors and the community on this. Uh, we'll first hear from the applicant. If the applicant is here for uh, item, uh, agenda item number 11, Levine Smoke Shop number 6, uh, why don't you come on up and welcome. Thank you. I'm Lori Scott. Welcome. Glad you're here today. Thank you. Any additional information you'd like to present or whatever you've got, you're welcome to, uh, to well, get, okay. get that today. Sure. Um, the purpose of our shop there, I mean, we're catering to, um, it's a cigar shop. And yes, we sell other tobacco products and accessories, but our main focus is the cigars. We're catering to the, the golf courses in the area. Golfers like to smoke cigars. Um, and that's our, our purpose our main purpose, but we do sell other tobacco items. We do sell, um, we are planning on selling drinks and, and snacks uh, as well. Uh, the lighting and signs were done with a contractor. Those were permitted and everything is legal about those. He got permits before he did them. Um, we own five other smoke shops in the Phoenix area. We don't tolerate People lingering around the building, hanging out in the parking lot. We don't, we don't tolerate that at any of our shops. Um, so I don't see that this would be any different. Uh, the times that I put on there from eight to eight, those are the shop, the hours that we operate our other shops. Um, we weren't quite sure whether we would close on Sunday or Monday. Sunday is when people go out and golf, so we'd like to be open for them, um, and probably close on a Monday. But we're we're not sure about the area yet, so we don't know what kind of traffic we're going to have at this point. So, and I'm happy to answer any other questions you have. Okay. Uh, thank you for that additional information. So, you've got five other shops. Any of them are in Tempe? No, they're all in South Phoenix. Okay. And so, Tempe has its own set of sign rules, for example, and lighting right. rules. From my view today, and I'm not staff or enforcement staff, it does not look like your signs comply with city signage requirements. So just to let you signs. know. Which signs? All the small signs that are around on the pillars or the outside oh, those, of the building. Yeah, those were just for the grand opening, and those will go away once our, right. Once we let people know that we're there. Okay. You know, then those well, and you away. can maybe get some special permits for special event signs, perhaps. Right. Trip with staff on that um, if we move ahead. Um, so you mentioned uh, you're aware some people may be concerned about loitering or hanging out. 
Right. And you said that uh, you prevent that. Can you describe how you prevent that? We don't that? tolerate it. We tell them they have to move on. They can't hang out. How does that happen if there's, how many people are on staff at the store at one time? Just one person? Two. Usually two? Yeah. So how would you discourage that and notice it was going on? We tell them to leave. Okay. We tell them it's, it's private property. It's not a place that they can just hang out. So you'd notify them? Yes. Okay. And then on the materials I have, it says closed Sundays and Mondays. So are you... Sundays or Mondays. We're not oh, sure. I see. I yeah. see. Or. Right. You're right. Thank yeah. you. I'm not sure which day that we want to close at. Okay. Um, and you're still not sure at this point? Right. Um, depending on the business that we get. You know, if we're busier on Sunday, we want to stay open on Sunday. Yeah, if your market is people recreating, I'm sure more of them are on Sunday recreating than Monday. Okay. Um, but like I said, how long have you been in this space? Uh, we just rented it this year in January. Okay, so you've been in there since January. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and you're confirming 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. are the hours you're looking for? Yes. Okay. Okay, I may have further questions for you later, but sure. I'm good right now. And thank okay. you again for the information. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've heard from the applicant. Um, and I have two speaker cards. And if you're not one of these two people and you want to speak, you're welcome to do so uh, after we get through these two. But do do a speaker card and hand it over to staff when you come up. Um, Actually, I only have one here. I heard from Lori. Uh, she's the applicant. And so I have Chris Hoover. Um, Welcome, and thank you for coming today. Uh -huh. um, my name is Chris Hoover, and I've lived in this area for 34 years. And um, that building has not been there 30 years. I can tell you that right now. Uh, so just to how long has it been there? I would say maybe fifteen years, About fifteen years at old at the most. And we have had a difficult time with the person that owns that, just getting them to clean up the graffiti that happens all the time. Hmm. And so um, I, I can tell you that we're not real comfortable with this smoke shop being there. And I think we can be real honest about the products that they sell. Uh, especially in the summer, I doubt if many people will be coming to buy a cigar from golf courses because it's so blazing hot, the, the ones that are close by. I think our, my concern now is I've lived there for 34 years. I bought the home in Tempe. My husband and I did. We see it as an investment. We've raised our family there. It's a great neighborhood, but it has issues. We have two ca cash checking places along baseline. And we have a pawn shop that I called about probably 15, 20 years ago when that happened, uh, when the pawn shop came up. So I feel like we have a lot of stressors for our neighborhood, and this is going to be one more stressor for our neighborhood, especially in property values. So I have a question for you. Can you tell me, does this affect our property values to have all of these things located near residential area? Could you repeat your question? And you tell me if this is going to impact the value of our homes and our ability to sell our homes if we have two check cashing places and a pawn shop and now a smoke shop. And everybody knows it's going to have bongs and everything right. else. So people, people are bright enough to figure that one out. Right. Well, I'm not a realtor, nor am I an appraiser or um, have that expertise. I'm more of a land use person. So whether there's three or four um, uses of I don't, whether the number's three or four, my opinion is probably not much. Um, it's still that other character, but it's really, I think, more the, the, the maintenance and the, the condition of your own properties versus things nearby. Um, it's hard for us to know, and uh, but I'll tell you, I'm not an expert on that. I wouldn't expect a direct impact from this approval um, or denial, but I can't tell you for certain either way. 
can we have an impact study done for secondary issues before the decision is made for this? Um, I'm going to refer that question. Normally not, but I'll ask staff if they want to elaborate on that at all. Mr. Abramson, do you have any additional comment regarding property value assessment or property value impacts from uh, new uses coming in or similar type of issue? Thank you, Hearing Officer Williams. Um, in the past, we've, we've had uh, realtors actually show up at hearings and indicate that there would be positive or negative impacts from a use, but there really has been no established criteria as to how to determine that. Um, it, you know, it would take more than just a few months to make any sort of determination and to, as to whether or not you could indicate that a particular business is a direct cause of a positive or negative impact on property values would be difficult at best. Well, I think Lori, when she said that we will tell people to leave, she's anticipating that there will be people hanging around. And, and as, a, as a mom, I can tell you that's bothersome. That's bothersome. And if people are, they, they look at schools. I work in Nevada Elementary. They look at schools. And they, they absolutely do research. And then they drive around. All of us would do that. All of us would do that. If we were going to make an investment in property in Tempe, and Tempe, just by the name of Tempe, people are attracted to living here because they know everything good about Tempe. And I think this area has been considered the ugly stepchild for a long time. I can honestly say that. We get the least attention in our neighborhood and lots of things happen. When I called about the pawn shop, the thing that was said. Right. Uh, Ms. Hoover, you were here for the beginning of today's hearing, right? Yes, and I was. And we had six or eight cases about nuisance properties and abatements right so do are you aware that all you need to do is call and make a complaint to the city that this there's I've weeds that, there's sir, trash there's graffiti and I the do city it all will the time. follow up i do it all the time because i care about my neighborhood so have you actually filed a complaint and the the city's not responded or what's happening no, with those? no eventually the graffiti got covered up so i'm an active citizen if something's Good. going wrong i even went to fries and said listen when I come and buy milk, right now I can go out to my car and I see a guy selling drugs right there in the Fry's parking lot, and Fry's told me we can do nothing about it. We can do nothing about it. Private property. Hmm. Am I going to hear that from, from Lori? We can do nothing about it? We, you guys are the last people we can come to. Who do we go to to say, hey, let's rethink this. Let's do a study. If, if smoke shops bring in, which I Googled, how much does the average smoke shop bring in Tempe? It's $1,200, $12,000 a month. Can we not spend a little time and money for, for the ugly stepchild? We spend a lot of time and money on other parts of Tempe. Can we not do this for this area? Mm -hmm. Well, I have a concern signal, signal, singling out this particular user. Staff, can you put up the neighborhood map again, maybe the zoning map? And can you point out, you said there's pawn shops and there's a pawn shop or a smoke and other shops? Yeah, 48th Street and Baseline. I called about that one when it first came up. Can you kind of show me on this map the area you're talking about? On 48th and, Street and Southern. Okay, so there we are. Lee, can you point out uh, 48th Street right. and where the subject property is, right. which is there? And then where are these other uses? Are they north or south? They're across the street on 48th Street, the two cash places. Oh, is that Phoenix across the street? Is that? Yeah. Uh -huh. But we are impacted by, by Phoenix. You've got to add that as a stress for this community. Right. Yeah. Although we don't get to have any jurisdiction or say about what happens over there, but I understand your concern. Anything else you wanted to add today? No, I just want to know if, it, if it's not you that we can come to. Who do we go to? Well, if, if I make a decision to approve this and you disagree with that decision, you absolutely have the right to appeal that decision. Is that correct, staff? You're aggrieved by that decision? That's correct. And the, uh, the appeal decision body would be the Development Review Commission. If this gets approved today, if, then you can see staff right after the meeting for instructions on that or know if you know how to reach staff. It sounds like you, you've done a, been a good citizen in notifying the city. Let them know you want to appeal, and there is an appeal board to this decision if this is approved. Okay, so, and, okay. and one last thing, Marion's going to bring it up. 
we, we didn't have much time to, as I walked from house to house, everybody I know that has a vested interest in our neighborhood who owns their home, they all wanted to call or email, and I think you probably got a lot of emails and calls today. They're concerned. They didn't even know it was happening. We need time to be able to let our neighbors know, and it's going to take a, a door to door visit. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And I'm glad that you made it today, and I'm glad the notice had some effect because we did get a number over six or seven, it looks like now, complaints or concerns about this. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is, uh, I think it's Brown, Brownell, Marion Brownell. And then we've got. Uh, moon shadow after that. Hi there. <clears throat> I've also lived in the neighborhood for 31 years. Can we get your name? Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm Marion Brownell. Welcome and thanks for thank coming you, today. And thank you for letting me speak. So yes, I've been in the neighborhood for 31 years and I'm now the lead neighborhood association person. And so, yes, and I have seen the neighborhood change in the 31 years. and. For the better, for the worst, and for the better, and the worst. And as far as smoke shops, <clears throat> the 48th Street and Southern, we have one at Hardy and Baseline, and we have one at um, the Fry Shopping Center right there on 48th Street and Baseline. So we already have some in our several in our area. And with the shop, the ones that we've noticed, there's a lot of loitering around the smoke shops. Uh, one, well, the one on 40, our baseline and Hardy, there's a lot. And then we, also the fries one. And as far as the meeting, there was no sign up until today. When we went by about 4.15, we noticed the sign was up prior to that. And I mentioned it to Lee. Again, we had no sign up stating that there was a meeting. And we don't know if everyone in the neighborhood received the green card that there was going to be a meeting today about this. We just wanted to bring that up. The martial arts store is owned by one of our neighbors. And yes, a lot of the kids from our neighborhood and also from Phoenix go to that martial arts store as long as, as also the wig store. I don't know the, who the owner is, but a lot of our people in the neighborhood and across Phoenix come there. And we just hope we would like to see something go in there. I know that will help with the city revenue, but like Chris said, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're the stepchildren and we seem to be like, because we're not the pretty people and we're on the outskirts, we would like to be considered sometimes and hope that you will listen to us. Thank you. You're you very welcome. Questions? I have an email from you as well, right? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you for coming. Appreciate that. Um, regarding posting and notice, uh, Mr. Jimenez, is there a distance that you have to be within of the site to get a notice from the city on these types of cases or the notice area? Yes, hearing Officer Williams, um, our public notification requirements follow the statutory requirements, which is uh, we send out postcards to property owners within 600 feet of the property line. It's a property line, a property line. In addition to that, we also send the chair or vice chair or primary contacts to the neighborhood or homeowner associations within a quarter mile of the property line. Um, we also advertise the agenda with the request uh, in the Arizona Republic. Um, and we also post the agenda on our website. Um, Got you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I have one more speaker card. Uh, Moonshadow, your time. Um, welcome and thank you for being thank here you. today. I'm sorry, I forgot, I forgot one me thing. A moment, I the apologize. sign, I forgot about the sign. The signs are usually posted um, approximately 17, 18 days prior to the hearing. It's, it's per, pretty much uh, three Fridays before the hearing is, uh, is scheduled. Um, staff, or staff goes out and posts the signs and takes photographs of the signs. Uh, when posted. Right, good. Well, I would say, while it's not a perfect system, the point is we've got some pretty good notification happening. People did get word and are here, so that's the good news. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jimenez. Moonshadow, your floor. Thank you. Um, I did receive notice. That's one reason I'm here. And I also was walking from my kitchen 
to my family room, and I have a, a window that faces towards 48th Street. I live on the west side of 48th Street in Phoenix, and I saw this giant smoke shop sign, and my heart fell that I could see this from inside of my house. Um, I have worked in the downtown Tempe area a lot. I have on commercial properties, and I work a lot with smoke shops, and so I understand some of the clientele that happens um, there. And I feel like we are living in an age where we would like smoking to go away. I would venture to say most people maybe here don't smoke anymore because it's not healthy for you. And the fact that one of the business in the shopping center caters to teaching children, the martial arts school, that having a smoke shop right next two doors down would not be a, a good influence for them. It is right on the borderline close to that elementary school, that's uh, Nevitt Elementary School. It's not that far out of the, the distance. And I just feel it's not an asset to the neighborhood. That space at one time had, um, before it was vacant, was a church. And that would be an asset to a, a neighborhood, to a community. I just, I just don't see a smoke shop that caters to cigars, bongs. If you look at the website, it's like you can learn the art of smoking. And I just feel that that's, that's an art that perhaps needs to die out in this day and age when we know that it's not good for our health. And I would, since this particular business owner does have other businesses in um, the valley that are viable. It's not going to financially hurt them to not have this particular business. And the community, the, those of us that live there, we, we really don't want, want it to be there because of the influence it could have to the children and the possible clientele that may create distress to the neighborhood. We have, I've lived, I've, I finally own my home um, and when I, 17 years ago I bought it, and at first when I moved in there, there was a lot of gunfire in that neighborhood, in that little area. And there hasn't been for a while, for several years. And it's just this last week, we, uh, or this last month, there have been a couple of gunshot sounds happening again. So if that's amping up, I don't want to add to that type of... Um, person because I don't think there's a lot of golfers that are going to drive past that smoke shop to, you know, the, the more, the type of person that um, is going to, I'm trying not to stereotype myself, <laughs> you know close, what I'm talking about. How close do you live to this building, to this shop? To this account? smoke shop? Well, yeah. I can see it from my house. I live, um, I may be even closer quote. than some of you, you all are too. I'm right across across the 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 canal goes right you next. Did it mail notice to you? Yes. Okay. That yes, answers my question. To, oh yes, it was mailed to me. And you're within 600 feet. You're close. Yes, I am. Gotcha. I okay. actually looked at that particular space to rent myself, and it didn't it, work for us. Thank you for anything else that you wanted to comment on. No, I think that okay. covers it. You know, and I know uh, tobacco is not healthy, or some things available to us, luxury items, I mean, I call them, are options and, and mm -hmm. choices that we make as individuals certainly share a concern about health issues and smoking um, but i let you know I will, it will not be a criteria for my decision today about whether the products they sell that product is right. you know specifically tobacco I won't weigh in on that yeah. but just want you to appreciate you bringing it up i can't make it a criteria but right um and then certainly concern i am concerned about your neighborhood and your future, your neighborhood, and kids being nearby. So mm -hmm. I appreciate those points very much. Okay. Thank, well, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't have any other speaker cards. Anyone else who wanted to speak on agenda item 11? I'd like to ask a question, but I didn't fill out a card, so can I fill out a card? You can fill out a card and hand it to staff and ask your question, and we'll wait for you to do that. No hurry. Take your time. Um, and then, uh, Lori, I'll ask you back up when we get the last speaker. See if you have any additional comments you want to make.
Number 11? Is that correct? Okay. I just, um, something dawned on me Let me when, just get your, let me just oh, get your um, name Barb on Brooks, it. Barb Brooks. Welcome. Thanks for and, being um, here, Barb. I've been a resident there for um, 28 years. And um, something dawned on me when Lori was talking about being able to tell people that they can't loiter. Um, and my concern with that is, unless we know that there's cameras everywhere, if there's only one person working in that store, it's easy for them to say, you can't loiter out here, this is private property. Now we need to know where are those people going. Are they going to go down to the martial arts place and stand there and hang out? Are they going to go to the hair place? Are they going to turn the corner and come into our neighborhood? Are they going to be at our park, which is right there? Are they going to hop over the alley fence to the residences that are right there? Where, is somebody going to monitor where they went? So are there going to be cameras everywhere where the person in the store can be saying, oh, look, they just went there. I need to call the police, whatever. That scares me. We've already had uh, several burglaries in our area. Most of them enter from the back, uh, more so where there's an alley than where there's a house. Um, we have a problem with traffic, a huge problem with traffic in that whole area. And we're already getting a Fry's Fuel Center and a Burger King on the opposite end at, Wendler, at the Fry's Electronics parking lot. So we already tried to fight that because that's going to bring more people there. Specific to the smoke shop, got to be more concerned about it, that. It, we're we got, going to have it from both areas. So we're going to have traffic coming in from that Fry's area. We already have traffic. And we're going to have people coming in from 48th Street when they leave. That's a big cut through. Um, Lee knows we've had meetings with the traffic engineers. That's a big cut through, people to come down 48th Street and cut through our neighborhood to avoid the intersection at Baseline and 48th. So now we're just introducing some more people driving through to get their cigars that they could have went to Baseline and 48th or Southern and 48th and gotten them there. So we really don't feel like we need that place there. We're really concerned, I am anyway, about the loitering. Um, and I am a smoker. And I don't go to smoke shops anymore because they freak me out when there's people hanging out front. And I am one of them. You know? So I don't even patronize those places. Um, I don't like the fact that they um, like to hang around within the 20-foot rule on some of the places and nobody says anything to them because I'm guessing most people are a little concerned that it could be retribution if they say something and also the fact that there's cigarette butts usually hanging around. And I am a smoker, but I, I'm not big on cigarette butts being just thrown haphazardly in streets where kids can see them and everything else. So that's my concern. All right. Thank you. Did I fill out enough on that? All right. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. I'm glad you came up to speak. Okay, last call. Anyone else? Let me ask the applicant to come back up for a couple questions. And uh, first of all, is any, anything you wanted to add briefly uh, to your earlier comments? I know you probably have heard these concerns before. I know some of them are germane to your business. Some of them are larger neighborhood issues that you can't control. But if there's something uh, constructive you want to add, go right ahead. Again, I will emphasize, we don't allow people to loiter outside of our stores. And I mean, we go have, ahead and address the hearing officer We if you will. have five other smoke shops. We don't allow people to loiter outside the smoke shop. It's not that they're there and we, we just don't allow it. We tell them to leave. I mean, that's just what we do. We don't allow kids in the store without a parent. So there would be no kids in our store. The property is not, it's better off with a business in there than being vacant. We haven't been in the shop. We, have, we were open for 10 days before we figured out that, found out that we couldn't until we got the permit. We were open for 10 days. The problems in the neighborhood did not arise from our store. Certainly would agree. Nobody's got a crystal ball. We can't tell whether something's going to happen, whether we're there or not. Uh, just for the record, it's a minority owned business. I'm a disabled vet. Yes, I have other businesses, but this is my business. So, 
Um, it's not okay. to say just because I don't have it, I've got other things to, to do. Right. This and is I, my business. And it seems you know how to do this business because you've got other shops I've that are successful. I've for six years in the, in the Valley. Well, and help me understand why loitering, you mentioned that before anybody else did. Why is that a problem? I read that in one of the comments or concerns from the that staff was addressed. Report. Oh, okay, from the letters. Right, and that's why I addressed it because it was one of the concerns that was addressed. Does that happen? Is that something that It tends... doesn't happen. Um, in your opinion, yeah. I have one store that people loiter at and it's in a con it's in a um, in front of a towing company in a commercial district um, I have another question for you too so you sell tobacco right yes what else do you sell we sell tobacco accessories cigars we have over a dozen 90 plus rated cigars mm -hmm. which is tobacco yes. accessories like pipes and water pipes, pipes and yes. things like that too? Yes. Pipes, grinders, tubes tubes that you roll your cigarettes in, that you roll the tobacco in. Um, for cigarettes, pipe tobacco. Yes, people use it for drugs. What we sell is not paraphernalia. Everything that we sell is perfectly legal. Before I ever opened a smoke shop, I checked with a police officer and said, how is it legal to sell this when it's illegal for somebody to possess it? When they possess it, it's usually got residue on it and it's used. That's not what we sell. We sell legal products. And certainly we have a lot of shops in Tempe that, that sell those things. That's all the questions I've got. And I want to sure. thank you for your patience and answering my questions. Sure. Um, and I understand you've got this, you don't have any other shops in Tempe, no. this would be your first. Um, after considering the staff recommendations and the information from staff, I did look at some police information. There's no real clear uh, pattern of crime in this area, uh, but, but hearing from uh, people and the members of the community and neighbors um, and from staff, there are some concerns with this use. Um, and uh, my, my decision on this case is to deny this use permit and not, not allow it to go forward. Uh, you can appeal this decision as outlined earlier, but I think the information I've received today, uh, concerns in the neighborhood, some concerns shared by myself and staff, uh, I don't think this use is the right use that's going to make a positive contribution uh, considering what else is in that neighborhood. I think it's a fragile area when I looked at it today. And uh, while this serves an immediate neighborhood, would I'm not sure it's a good mix right there. Um, there's other services nearby, as have been indicated by staff and the neighbors, that are similar uh, to serve people with these needs. Uh, certainly no problem with tobacco sales, uh, but in this small center, on this location, in this corner, um, and given the information I have uh, regarding the applicant and uh, uh, information provided to date, uh, this request for approval of the use permit, uh, PL 170157, um, is denied. And thank you, everybody, for your time today and coming, and thank you, the applicant, for your patience. Hearing Officer William? Yes. Uh, if you would, go through the use permit criteria as to why you're okay. indicating a denial. Sure. Thank you. Happy to do that. Uh, under Tempe requirements and regulations, there's a set of criteria for approving a use permit, and those criteria need to be met, and this is largely my concern today about that. Uh, the first one is any significant, in, in, significant increase in vehicular or pedestrian traffic, um, and I don't think that's really the concern here. There would be some additional traffic, but we want traffic in the center for, uh, for businesses to be successful. Um, my concern would be pedestrian traffic that may loiter. There's a lot of focus on loitering, so I don't think that criteria is met. Uh, nuisance arising from odor, dust, gas, noise, vibration, smoke, heat. Uh, we're talking about smoking. Uh, there's no direct proof there would be smoking and increased smoke out there, um, but I don't have any proof that there wouldn't be either other than a promise to, to not allow loitering to happen. I don't feel that criteria has been met. Uh, con contribution to deterioration of the neighborhood or downgrading property values, which is in conflict with the goals, objectives, and policies. 
for rehabilitation or redevelopment or conservation as set forth in the city's adopted plans and general plan. I think that's been a large part of our discussion today is concern about getting the right mix of uses at this location. And I share the concern with staff and the neighbors that this is not the right use at this time um, at this location. Number four, compatibility with existing surrounding structures. Um, I think, you know, generally this is a compatible commercial use. And I don't have a concern with this criteria, but we need to meet all of these criteria for the permit to be approved. Um, and there's some concern about property maintenance at this uh, location, that this owner for this retail center or building. Um, there's been some complaint history, I understand, some improvements, but perhaps ongoing issues. I noticed the condition of the property was not A1 when I was there today. Uh, uh, item number five, criteria, control of disruptive behavior, both inside and outside. You know, we discussed putting a condition, a compliance condition on this because we were concerned for that very issue, that things would happen in a negative way. And I don't have enough information to be sure that they wouldn't happen or they'd be adequately prevented from happening in what's already a relatively fragile setting uh, where we know kids are coming to a, uh, a training facility in the very same parking lot on the very same sidewalk in the very same building, just feet away from it. And is this the case, Mr. Jimenez, that there's a separation requirement and this was just a little bit beyond that separation requirement for schools or churches? That's correct. Um, separation requirement is 1,320 feet and this site is located 1,340 feet away. So noting that it does meet that criteria, it does meet that standard of the code, it creates a concern in the criteria uh, for me in terms of control of behavior and that's why we have that criteria to begin with. So I don't feel the fifth criteria is met either in terms of control of disruptive behavior and we have a high potential for that and which would also uh, potentially affect minors. Uh, so those are my reasons for denial. That's um, again the decision is to deny the request. It is appealable and that would be notified as well if there's a an appeal filed I assume Mr. Jimenez. That's correct. If uh, the applicant chooses to appeal um, Postcards would be distributed to the same radius, 600 feet of the property, um, of the property uh, lines, as well as um, the signage, um, an advertisement in the newspaper and the website. Okay. And the, the decision, uh, the appeal decision-making body would be the Development Review Commission. And the uh, applicant has the right to appeal within 14 days. 14 calendar days. Yeah, it was today. July 5th. Mm -hmm. This is the date on that. Okay, anything else, staff, on this specific case? I have nothing else further to add. All right, thank you for the reminder on the criteria. Uh, uh, that case has been denied. That is the last case on today's agenda. The next hearing officer meeting is Wednesday, July 5th, 2017, here in City Council Chambers. That is a Wednesday, not a normal day for us. It's a day later than normal in the month. Um, and Mr. Abramson, anything else in general you'd like to add today? No hearing, Officer Williams. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Again, thank you for members of the public and our applicants. We appreciate your time and diligence. Today's meeting is adjourned. <laughs>